Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's, the splendor of the South Side. If you're new here, you can become a member of our parish. Please talk to our ushers in the back who will be happy to guide you to our registration forms. Our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses were a success. So the 4 p.m. Masses was our biggest one and it was full, but, the, but, the, but, there, but there was no one in the overflow lot. So everyone, so everyone that came to St. Peter's got to experience St. Peter's and not a locked door. So thank you all very much for spreading out and just allowing for more people to be here. After, after, one of the of the, after one of the masses, there was a non catholic family that was here. They told me that my preaching was spirit-filled, so that was nice of them. Confessions are back to our normal schedule, so, 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 so we'll so we be before every mass in the main entrance play. So, 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 even though, so, so even though Advent is over, I'm pretty sure people still sin, so you know where to go. And this Thursday and Friday, there is a holy day of non-obligation. <laughs> It's the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, on January 1st. But like every Mass, there's no obligation to, during the pandemic. So if you want to come, it's because you love God and you say that, and you're, and, you're, and, you're, and you're able to take the risk. So it's going to be New Year's Eve at 5.30 p.m. and New Year's Day at 9.15 a.m. See you there, and yes, uh, thank you very much.
The shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brethren, let us acknowledge our sins. Some parents will celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lived and reigned with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, no, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to this son of his, whom Sarah <laughs> bore him. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. 
He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Our reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictates of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to perform the customs of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce 
so that, the, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer and coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Merry Christmas. Remember that Christmas is not just one day of celebrations, but it's eight days of celebration. So I'm wearing gold for the next seven days. So kids, I want you to tell your parents that you ought to have cake for the rest of the week because we're still celebrating Christ's birth, okay? At St. Peter's, we have a very beautiful church. We are the splendor of the South Side, after all. And our high altar is very ornate with lots of intricate patterns. But at the base of our high altar, below the altar of sacrifice, is a simple image of the child Jesus. Nothing too fancy, just Jesus' children there, you would expect there would be this ornate image of Christ, the Last Supper, of some great mystery of our faith, but instead it's just Jesus has a child. Why? I would venture that it's because Christ's ministry, Christ's mission, Christ's love was all developed as a child. One of the ramifications of the incarnation of God taking on flesh and becoming a baby is that he grew up and matured as any other human being would. As St. Paul says, he was like us in all things but sin. Thus, Jesus learned how to be Jesus from his family. All the great miracles, all the great teaching, all the great love was first planted with his family and it grew within his family. In Nazareth, over in Israel, at the, at the traditional site of the Annunciation, there's a sign that says, here the word became flesh. But nearby, at the traditional site of the home of the Holy Family, it says, Here the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and here the favor of God was upon him. Jesus, in his human nature, learned through his family. So Jesus learned from his family how to be human. It was his family that taught him how to communicate. It was his family that taught him how to deal with stress. It was his family that taught him how to love. And that is how it works for each one of us. We all learn how to be human through our family. We learn what normal is through our family. Things that we just pick up and just presume is normal. Does, does, does the toilet seat go up or down? Obviously up. What do, you do, what do you do when you're sick? Chicken noodle soup and 7-Up. How much jello do you, do you eat for Christmas? As much as you can. Every aspect of being a human, we picked up from our family. We become mirrors of our family for better or for worse. So when the family is holy and blessed, 
the child becomes holy and blessed. But when the family struggles, the child struggles. There's a lot of pressure on parents because becoming a parent is this big responsibility. You have to to like care for this little one just given to you, it's scary. And there's this tendency in our culture to look upon having children as the end of one's life. Once you have kids, you can't really travel about and you're going to be condemned to a minivan for the next 20 years. But the hardest part about having children is knowing that you can't keep them safe. You want to wrap them in bubble wrap, but eventually they'll be out on their own and they'll wind up getting hurt in some way. That's what Mary found out in our gospel, that her son will have a future that's going to change the world, but he will be a sign that is contradicted. A sign that reveals how much God loves man, but at the same time, is going to be seen as punished by God. What greater contradiction can there be than Christ's cross? The love of God suffering for his people. And it's this suffering that's going to be a sword in Mary's heart. To love someone is to open oneself up to feeling their pain. And to have a family is to open yourself up to so much more pain. And there's this temptation to just cut oneself off from family, to stop caring about other people's problems. But that's not going to bring us happiness because we were made to love. And love carries this risk, and it's more than a risk, it's a guarantee. If you love someone, you will get hurt. You will experience their pain. So when this happens, how are we going to react? And how will our children learn how to react? One of the things we talk about during marriage prep is How did your family growing up react to problems? Some people some people some people some people grew up in households where problems were just ignored. Other families only knew how to shout about their issues. So if you go into a family, into a marriage with a couple whose families deal with problems in different ways, you're gonna have problems. But if we're able to recognize just how the other was formed. It helps us with communicating. So how did the Holy Family raise Christ? How did St. Joseph teach Jesus how to be a carpenter? How did Mary teach him how to pray with the scriptures? How did they teach him how to love? And how can we imitate the Holy Family in our own lives as we seek to fulfill this high call of the family? to teach the child how to love, to introduce the child to the promises of eternal life. For this week, I have two tips. Tip one, I want us to reflect upon the idea of family, that yes, family is those related by blood, but family is anyone who we are called to love. It has, God has commanded us, that's basically everyone. So we have the parish family here. We have our friends who become like family. We have our neighborhood family. And we need to see how we are called to take care of them and to, take, and, and to, allow, them to, and to allow them to take care of us because we're family. All families teach us how to love. Are you teaching your family how to love? And are they teaching you how to love? This past month, I've had a new family family member. Our seminarian, Lee Allen, has been staying at the rectory during his break from seminary. However, the past six months I've been here, 
I've gotten used to living by myself, doing what I want when I want. But because I, because I now have a companion in the house, I'm being forced to change, you know? Become more conscientious of another person. It's no longer all about me over there. I have to deal with him. It's a little bit annoying, but it's leading me to grow in love. To care about someone not named Patrick. So that's good for me, you know? So even though, so, 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 so even though I can no longer just wear the TV at night, and even though food, even though food disappears from the fridge twice as fast, it's helping me to grow in love. So how is your extended family teaching you how to love? How are you, how are you teaching them how to love? Hopefully, 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 Liao is picking up more virtues and vices from me. We'll see. So your tip for this week is to reach out to a member of your extended family, someone that God has placed in your life who you're calling to love, and love them. The member of your family who is forgotten, the member of your family who is cranky and tough to be around, and show them love, but also let them teach you what love is. That love depends more upon the giver than the receiver. You know, you don't have to. Be, you don't have to. You don't have to be perfect to, to, to receive love. That's an important thing to learn. Tip two: read the search. If you are here this past Christmas Day and Eve, you would you would have received a Christmas present from the parish, a book called The Search. It's a book about how our search. It's a book about our search for happiness and meaning. So I want every family here to read through that book and then pass it on to someone in your life who is searching for happiness, who's searching for this something more in his life. So if you think, wait a second, but I, but I, but I, but I, but I already know who God is. Uh, I, there's, 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 no, there's, there's, no, there's no need for me to search. Well, two things. One, God is infinite, so we can always grow more in our love of God. And two, it gives us the vocabulary to communicate to other people, like in their desires for God. You know, how do you talk to someone that, 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 that wants to find God? If you read this book, it's going to give you the words you can use. My homily series during January will be built around this book, so please start reading it for more context. Family is the building block of society because it is in the family that we learn how to love. It is here that we learn how we're supposed to interact with the world. So as Christ was formed into Christ in the heart of the Holy Family, let us ask that that same spirit may permeate our own families, that we may enter into the family of God that we may learn how to love and learn how to teach others to love. Let us send it off for our let us send press our faith. I believe in one God.
trusted in God's love and mercy, we offer him these our prayers. For Pope Francis, Bishop Kevin, and all bishops, may they guide their flock into a more intimate encounter with Jesus Christ in the upcoming year. Let us pray to the Lord. For our nation and all elected leaders, may they embrace humility as they seek laws that benefit the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, especially those who suffer from depression and anxiety, let us pray to the Lord. For our family and friends who do not know Christ, that they may be drawn to him as the fulfillment of all their desires, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially those who have passed on to their eternal rewards in the year 2020, may they enjoy God's presence for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the Gada, Lubijans, and Leeson families, the intention of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, draw us deeper into your love and answer all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, for my sacrifice and yours to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families, 
firmly in your grace and in your peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the feast of this all-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call strange humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, this joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make a humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, grant us our Pope and Governor Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth of the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who do to them, for the redemption of their souls, the health and well being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world. And in communion with those who now we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles of Martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Osagonus, John and Paul, Cousins, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through the merits and prayers in all things we will be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count them the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make us most acceptable, and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holding and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious child in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the child to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, O Lord, celebrate the memorial of the plus passion, the resurrection of the dead, and the conversion to the heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glory and majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the child's everlasting salvation. Be pleased to all offered to this reading kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice as well as victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, grant that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who pray here at the altar see the most holy body and blood of your Son and be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have come before us with the sign of faith and rest in the of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ with refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who are those sinners? Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share of all the apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marshall, Linus, Peter, Susan, Tupac, Pachua, Agatha, Lucy, Agatha, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we can make all these good things, O Lord, we sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into danger, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, which is the grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait for us at home, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace your unity, in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share the company forever through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son, has driven darkness from the world, and by the glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your mind with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. May the blessed Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael.